Hi folks, today I'm super excited to share with you a salt and pepper chicken chops. It's just based on, and the reason why I call salt and pepper chicken chops is because it's based on one of our family favorite recipes, salt and pepper pork chops. We always order it when we go to the restaurant and it's also in our book. And look at that. This is what we're making and it's going to be chicken. So for all of you who don't eat pork or just love chicken and want and prefer chicken, this recipe is for you. Crispy has nice relish with the crispy garlic and um, just the freshness of uh, some long hot green peppers and some shallots. You just get a bowl of rice and you go to town on that. So very simple. We have aromatics our salt and white pepper mixture, along with a couple of spices you'll see in the recipe. Chopped garlic, which we're gonna fry till they're golden brown. Some fresh, long hot chili peppers, and some shallots, or red onions if you don't have it. And of course, our chicken, which uh, is sliced a quarter of an inch. Now, a lot of uh, people like to make chicken nuggets with salt and pepper chicken nuggets and what have you, but I really think this recipe should be chicken chops. So they're sliced like pork chops. They have a nice batter. They've been marinated and have a nice batter to them. And we're going to shallow fry them. Super excited, super easy to make at home. You have a wok with, a, with very high rim. Uh, so it shouldn't make it too much of a mess. We're going to, we're going to, because I know a lot of people don't like to uh, deep fry. And I'm telling you, it's worth it bowl of rice with this, you're going to go to town. All right, let's get into it. Okay, we're going to make chop sized pieces, like pork chop sized pieces, uh, that are about, about a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch thick. I'm going to cut that, put that aside, and you see this is kind of thick here. And we just need to butterfly it a little bit, and the way you do that is you just kind of Cut it on the side here, like that, and fold it out so it's like a little butterfly. Give a little pound. You could use a mallet if you have, but if you see there, that's kind of a nice, a nice thickness, three-eighths of an inch or so. Perfect, and that's exactly what you want. Same thing, I'll do it again. So we got little hanging pieces, which is kind of good because they'll, they'll be nice and crunchy. But this part's thick, so I'm going to slice it. Get a little palm, get a little flat hand here so you don't cut yourself. Like that. And then this part's slightly thick, it's not too bad. But you know, pound it out, cut it in half, then you have two little chicken pork chicken chops. That's it. And then we're gonna marinate this up. You think these are a quarter inch thick? You're crazy. About three eighths inch. A half an inch. You think? I don't think so. Half an inch. You know how much half an inch is? Half an inch. Yeah, nah, a quarter. To, a half an inch is about that much. I think that about that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Half an inch. So this oil, right? I my choice of oil is canola oil. A lot of people uh, say that uh, in the comments actually, it's like, hey, my oil is like foaming up like crazy. What's going on? Well, a lot of times. Uh, corn oil, soybean oil, they do, it does that. And uh, sometimes it's also due to low quality oil. And um, you know, if, you, if, if the oil foams, then that's not the right oil to buy next time. Uh, but you know, usually canola oil, it doesn't happen to me. So that's why I like canola oil as a choice. Now what we're gonna do first is fry the garlic. So here's a couple of things that are essential. You need in instant read thermometer or you can use an old school thermometer to make sure your oil temperature is correct. You need a strainer. Fine mesh strainer is the best for frying the garlic. And a wok spatula does come in handy for moving the things around in the oil. So let's check our oil temperature. Now we're going to first fry the garlic. So it looks like it's about 265, 270. It's kind of fluctuating between two 50 and 275, 80, that's perfect. That's where we're gonna start our garlic. In goes the garlic. 
Very important not to burn this garlic, so we're not going to rush it. Just going to let this go a little bit until the garlic is kind of like a, a very light golden brown. Temperature control is pretty important here. You want to keep it around 250. You burn this garlic and it'll get bitter and it'll ruin your dish. You're going to have to start all over. So very important to control the temperature and watch this garlic. So 250, this is pretty safe. And I have some of this uh, garlic here around the edges that are starting to brown. You have to be careful with that. Just looking good. Got to be patient. All right, we're fluctuating right around 260. That's very good. And we're going about, I'd say, two minutes now. So I would say with some patience, you're going you're gonna to let this garlic fry for about three, four minutes. You don't want it to get really golden brown because if it's, if it's really golden brown, it's probably too brown. Okay? So now we're, we're about three minutes here. And I went on the uh, conservative side and kept the temperature low. You're going to get a little plate here lined with paper towel. And this is where your fine mesh strainer comes into play. I've turned off my flame and you just scoop. And that's about right. I could have cut this garlic a little bit more uniform, but it's looking good. That is the perfect color right there. You notice how it in the wok, it did not look very brown. You put that on the paper here, and it is a light golden brown. That's perfect. So you want the oil to drain. I'm gonna spread this out a little bit because what'll happen is that it's still soft, and then this garlic, if you let it sit for a little while, will get nice and crispy. And that's what we want. All right. I'm gonna let this sit here for a little while. All right, we're up to temperature. Now, so we wanna stir this uh, batter up so it's all coated nicely. Okay, and you can use a uh, piece of tongs for this, but I like to just use my fingers. I'm just gonna put it in. I'm going to adjust the heat a little bit, turn it up a little bit. Because the oil is going to cool. Chicken's going to cool the oil. And I just wanted to show you what this chicken did to this oil. So it cooled it down to 330, 332. So I turned the heat up a little bit. And of course you can fry this in batches. Now since I put these in for about a few minutes already, I'm gonna put a small piece in. And what you do, take your wok spatula, and you just kind of press against there and just ease this here off the bottom of the wok. Just let these babies fry. These, these chicken chops are going to fry about three to four minutes. So when you say chicken chops, they're just fries. They're chicken fries. <laughs> <laughs> yes. These are looking good. Now today I'm choosing to use a little bit less oil and then fry for more batches so we conserve oil. I know, I know a lot of the readers have said, what do we do with all this oil after you fry? What you do is you save it, put it through a fine mesh strainer so you get all the little bits out of it, and then you save it for stir fries. That's the secret to restaurant flavor. You stir fry with this fried oil. It's got garlic in it. It's got some of the spices from the chicken. People like 
always say, hey, I, I don't understand. I, I can't get that restaurant flavor. Well, sometimes it's MSG, but sometimes it's also using this oil. Let that drain. And I love putting that into the uh, cast iron pan. And we're gonna do our next batch. All right, we're on the second fry now. I've fried it first, three batches. And I'm, it's kind of important to remember um, which batch you fried first and put that in next because right after frying this, uh, this third batch, you don't wanna put it in yet because all the juices in there are cooling off. They're gonna release some steam and then they're going to basically uh, soften the crust. So you want that temperature to go back down and then we're gonna turn this temperature, oil temperature back up and fry them quickly. And basically what they're gonna do is that quick second fry is gonna fry the outside so the outside is crispy. So this is a little soft now. It's still a little crispy, but it's a little soft. So the idea is to get a very high temperature probably 350 or 375 even, because once we toss this in there, it's gonna cool the oil. And then get them crispy, take them back out, and then we're gonna plate them pretty quickly. So I want this temperature to be close to 350 because I'm gonna fry this second fry in two batches, and this is gonna cool off the oil quickly. Here we are, so about 350, we're, we're going up. I've got the flame on. So now we're just gonna toss in half the chicken. There we go. It's a little crowded, so you may wanna move the oil around. Let's do a check. So this is right around 350 now. I'm gonna adjust the temperature because it seems kinda high, a little high, but that's okay, 365. So you're gonna watch. We're going on almost 45 seconds, a minute. And now I can feel these pieces are getting crispy from my uh, wok spatula. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually flip some of these. Oh yeah. So this is like the egg rolls. This is just like the egg rolls. They're calling you. The moisture is starting to heat up in the inside and they're saying, we're done, we're done. So now is when you gotta take it out because otherwise you're gonna start overcooking the chicken and it's gonna, the moisture is gonna come back out and make your chops soggy again. Okay, and I'm gonna put these other ones in. Whew. All right, I'm transferring the the chicken to a plate right now. Doing it quickly, I have kitchen hands so I can stand the heat. You don't, want to get soggy, right? you don't want them to get soggy, that's right. So that's why I'm kind of putting them apart while the second fry is happening. So that's, these are going on about a minute and they're gonna start splattering soon, so be careful. These are crispy, I'm turning it off. I'm gonna transfer these now. Now the second fry allows you, ensures you get a crispy chicken. Transfer them here. All right, so. I got a small pan here because I, I, while the chicken is, 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 is hot, I want to immediately work on the aromatics. Because if I take the time, you can hear that little sear. If I take the time to clean the wok out, it's gonna, it's gonna cool, my chicken's gonna be cool. Then I'm gonna add this shallot, and I happen to be using red onion. And 
Now I'm going to toss some of this spice in here. I'm going to turn off the heat now. And I got to put our garlic in. Mixed. Okay. Put the rest of the chicken chops on the plate. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm going to sprinkle this relish and the extra pepper over everything. There it is. Salt and pepper chicken. One bowl of rice for everyone. And this recipe actually uses 20 ounces of chicken. Why? Because a pound of chicken is not going to be enough. <laughs> Let's go eat. Get some rice. It looks really good. The camera loves it. The camera loves you, baby. The camera loves you, baby. I hear my father's daughter. Go for it, father. Got your rice. Wow. <laughs> Chicken lovers, this is your day. It is so good. It is so good. Hey, I would take this over Popeyes any day. Them strong words. You love Popeyes. I love Popeyes. <laughs> I love Popeyes. White rice. Salt and pepper chicken definitely wins over your two-piece meal with the Cajun rice. I'm sorry. This does it. <laughs> oh my god. My dinner. Oh my god. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, this is really good. What do you this think? Crazy. What do you think of it oh. as opposed to the pork? It's better. You think What? Really? If you like chicken. A little bit better. Like, guy, you like chicken? This would be is better. Really good. Wow. It's it really killer. crispy. It's killer. Mmm. Oh my goodness. It's killer. You gotta try that. Mm. Oh my god, it's so good. This Damn. small piece is not so hot. Yeah, with the like a lot of garlic. Mmm. Flavor's on point. Mm. It's our recipe. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same as the rest of the Mm-hmm. Mmm. Isn't that crunch? Wow. It tastes like pork. It's so good. Mmm. Mmm. Gotta get some rice. For everybody out there who hasn't experienced the joy of salt and pepper pork chops because you don't eat pork, this is like your day. You have to try it. It's your father. Gee, those peppers are spicy. You got a job, bees. <laughs> the cheese.
can try to grab me. <laughs> but it's very juicy. Eat it with the pepper. That's me. that's what makes it. Mmm. Oh. <coughs> it's spicy. <laughs> that's what I said. Oh, it's spicy one. <coughs> oh my god. So, but it's delicious, right? <laughs> It's really good. The relish is really good. The relish is everything. Mm. Try the garlic. Mm. That is good. Sorry. <laughs> mm. Don't sleep on this one.